So we're going to be starting right out. Uh, Mary is with us. She's the director, and we're so happy to have her with us. And along with her, she's brought three of the uh, uh, delightful uh, young uh, Girl Scouts. We have uh, Julianne, we have Gabby, and we have, um, uh, yes, right, 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 right. Shelby. Shelby, Shelby. <laughs> I, did, I wanted to say Megan, and I go, no, it's not Megan. It's not Megan. <laughs> Shelby. So we're going to be talking about those Girl Scout cookies. Mm -hmm. We have a few right here in front of us, if they can pick that up. So Mary, tell me, when does this sale start and when can people get cookies? Oh. Where can they order them? So we will start selling cookies on February 8th. Girls will start taking orders across the capital region. These cookies that are ordered now will be delivered sometime around the end of March, about March 24th. But I've got a great piece of news to share this year for the first time. The weekend of February 22nd to the 24th, we are going to give our customers a sneak preview of cookies. We are having cookie booths across the region for just three days only and people can come by and buy their favorite box of cookies a can little they bit take early. It with them? They can take it with well, them. See that's the, that's the thing. You, I mean they like to be able to buy them and, and take them. They will and so they're going to be able to do that for one weekend just to get a sneak preview of cookies this year. We're excited. It's the first for us. It's National Cookie Weekend. We're going to be participating so we look forward to seeing everybody at our cookie booths and they want to know where a cookie booth is. They can go to our website and find a cookie locator. Just click that and put in your zip code and it'll tell you all the cookie booths in that zip code. Oh, well, that's great. Now, let, we, you've brought three of the Girl Scouts with you, so I'm going to go around and, and talk to each one of them. And I'll, we'll start with Shelby, because I got your name, right? So, Shelby, what's your favorite cookie? Because you have something unusual. Um, yeah, I actually recently was diagnosed with celiac disease. It's an autoimmune disorder where my small intestines can't absorb wheat or gluten. So, my personal favorite is the Toffee Tastic, which is a crunchy cookie with little toffee bits in it. And the great thing about it is, like, typically, like, gluten free cookies are very crumbly and dry and, like, break apart. But, like, I would have oh, noticed with them. Yeah, these are better, though. Yeah, right? these are really good. <laughs> they, they notice they don't break apart in my hand once you take a bite. Yeah, yeah, okay. And they're gluten free. Yes. So, this is new, isn't it? Or is that, have they had gluten free all the time? I don't recall. We've, we've had gluten free cookies, I think, about three years okay, now. Okay, yeah, because they haven't been a long time. It has not, but it's been here for a a few years. Okay, yep. good. And, and there's only one style of gluten free, right? Yes. Okay, good. But it's there. It's right there. there. Yes. And it's one you like. Yes. yes. Okay, good. So we're going to go here. And I have Gabby behind me. Gabby, what's your favorite cookie? I think I'd have to say the Thin Mint. You know, classic minty cookie. And something that people don't really typically know about it is that it's actually vegan. It's vegan? Mm -hmm. I did not know that. So we have gluten free, we have vegan. Who knew? Okay, that's great. Um, where do you sell your cookies? Um, I you call up your grandmother and your uncle yeah, and your aunt. Uh, <laughs> I reach out to relatives. I actually uh, send yeah. cookies to my relatives all the way in Alaska. Okay. Um, I also try selling to friends and teachers at school. And we do our local cookie booths around the community. And we try and go door to door selling when we can. Okay, good. That's great. And how about you, Julianne? Well, I like the Samoas, the purple in the front. They're okay, my and you've got, we've got a few of them right yeah. here. They always have been ever since we were like in kindergarten and we weren't actually allowed to sell cookies yet, but I like those ones and then, yeah. So yeah, that's great. So, and then you don't mind selling them and getting out there and raising, what do they do with that money? You know, they do a lot of things and these girls may have their own plans. I can, sh I can share some of the troops have done community projects. Uh, one group of troops in Rexford bought a bulletproof vest for a police dog. Um, other girls will go on trips and so they earn that money to help pay for those trips whether it's overseas or uh, domestically to Washington, D.C. Um, I know these girls have done money, done projects with the monies that they've earned, and maybe you can share some of the things you've done. With yeah, that would be great. Ones. We have time, so let's start. Well, let's start yeah. here, Gabby. Um, we've used some of our money to uh, fund our Silver Award project, which is a uh, kind of help your community when you're in middle school. Uh, so we built buddy benches for local elementary schools to help stop bullying. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. And how about you, Julian? Um, when we were in elementary school, our cookie money helped us go to Washington, D.C. for the um, 100th anniversary of Girl Scouts. How exciting was that really was. Cool. Oh, that an exciting yeah. trip. And how about you? Well, like what Julianne said, we do a lot of trips. Like recently we did a winter encampment. Winter and we camping. stayed over at Hidden Lake Camp and we used the money like for food and all the things like that. So it's, it's used to, to support the activity. Mm -hmm. Are you all in the same troop? Yes. 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 Oh, okay, good. Because so, they seem to know each other. And very, yeah. very well. Yes. Now, are you all in the same school? 
Yes. Yes. Okay. For now. Yeah, I'm just for now. Yeah. <laughs> so I just kind of wondered how that worked. So when uh, are the troops associated with a school, or you just have a troop and then wherever they're coming from? Both. Both. So some. So if they're homeschooled, they could still join a troop. Absolutely. Or sometimes they're associated with churches or other community, you know, organizations or you know. So schools are certainly a very common place for troops to form, but they're not the only place. And then we have girls who don't belong to a troop. They're called uh, Juliets, kind of a special name we have. They still participate in Girl Scouts. No Romeos, right? <laughs> no Romeos, not in Girl Scouts, but they participate. <laughs> they participate in Girl Scouts. They can sell cookies too. We offer a lot of programs at the council level that these girls take, you know, take part in. And often we find with older girls who have extremely busy lives and schedules, being part of a troop can be a challenge. But they still want to be a Girl Scout, so they continue to be Girl Scouts. But they're in the sort of Juliet path, and we stay connected with them as well. Mm -hmm. Now, do you, because I always ask these questions, because uh, volunteers are very difficult to find. Absolutely. Do you need volunteers to be troop leaders? Absolutely. We, we desperately, well, maybe not desperately, we very much need troop leaders. And we've always been, frankly, successful at recruiting girls to be, lead, you know, to come in and become troop members. But it's getting the leaders and getting the volunteers. We've got some great resources, plus staff who help leaders and, and help leaders on, you know, what can they do and help them kind of chart out their, their plan for the year for the troop. So absolutely would love anybody who is got the time to come in and be a leader, we'd love to have Should them. Should they have been a Girl Scout before? They don't need to be. Okay, in fact, so they don't have to have a history. They can just they don't have to have, have a, history. a love of, of helping. Helping, helping girls. We, we have leaders who... You know, oftentimes you might, not surprising, leaders may be parents, often moms who have daughters, but we often have leaders who are uh, maybe moms, but they don't have daughters, and that's why they become part oh, of Girl Scouts. So it's an opportunity to, to work with girls because in their personal lives they don't have daughters on a day-to-day -day basis to do yeah. that with. Well, what a delightful way to uh, get that relationship yes. going. If you're interested in Girl Scout cookies, and who wouldn't be, uh, you can certainly uh, check their booth out. I think you, she said February 24th. Is that we February 22nd to 24th, 24th is yeah. our first weekend of booth sales, and then in April we will have them up uh, for pretty much every weekend in the month of April. And a, our cookie locator is a link on our website. You can find, put in your zip code. Will it'll you be give at malls, you basically malls? You know? Yes. Malls, okay. yep, malls and stores and okay. all locations okay. around the region. So check it out. Oops, oh, my microphone. <laughs> I don't know. I can't seem to keep my microphone on. But anyway, if you're interested in Girl Scout cookies, and as I said, who isn't, check it out. Go to their cookie locator. And if one of these lovely ladies comes to your door, please buy a few boxes of cookies, your favorite kind. No excuse if you're a vegan or gluten-free. They're They got you covered. Stay tuned. We've got a great segment coming up next, and you take a look at this Chinese culture. And then from then on, we're going to talk about Boston marriage. Stay tuned. <laughs>